afternoon. Awesome. Very good. Hua. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Last presentation, last little bit of the day. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, so I thank you very much for being here today. Today's presentation is uh, kind of one of the first times the three of us are going to present on this subject together. So definitely welcome your feedback and input and questions and comments as we go through uh, what we're going to get out of this, really what we want to get out of this. So I appreciate you being here today and thank you for going along on this journey. Uh, my name is Jason Ellis, I'm a program manager for your Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs Vet Corps and the Veterans Conservation Corps. It's within my program or my division in the Behavioral Health Division um, that we are working towards providing more opportunities or connections for veterans into agriculture as we see it as both as a job opportunity as well as ecotherapy and transitional. Um, I have with me today Vicki uh, Carter. You can introduce yourself, Vicki, if you'd like. Oh, great. Um, I'm Vicki Carter. I'm the director of the Spokane Conservation District and the Vets on the Farm program, which I will be talking about today. And I'm Wendy Knopf. Yep, and I'm Wendy Knopf. I work for Northwest Farm Credit Services out of Spokane. We actually have a branch here in Wenatchee. And I'm um, co founder with Vicki for Vets on the Farm. All righty. So, one of the things, so our objectives today uh, with our time together is both to highlight value and benefits of engaging veterans in agriculture. Uh, describe current financing and initiatives available to veterans, um, and the describe programs, organizations, uh, initiatives statewide that will help veterans as they're interested in agriculture. These are the ones that we would like to identify. Is there anything specific that you guys came here today that you would want us to focus on and answer for you? So we all agree these are the three things? Good to go. All right. So, why veterans and ag? What's interesting in that? Is there anybody in this room that doesn't believe agriculture is a viable direction to take veterans or to offer as an opportunity? <laughs> it's a good thing you're all in here today. Huh? Yeah. Department of Veterans Affairs. I can reach my hand if you want me to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be an ace There you all go. Right? Okay. The Department of Veterans Affairs, about a few years, uh, you know, three or four years ago, we started receiving a lot of phone calls from folks that were getting out in the state, both on the east side and the west side, that were really interested in ag, but they didn't know no they didn't know where to start. One of the basic things that we were being asked was, where do I even begin? My family wasn't in ag, I didn't grow up in a rural community, but I know this is something that I want to look at and start doing. So we identified that we wanted to start figuring out a way to do that. Um, one of the easiest ways for us to do that was to place it within our Veterans Conservation Corps, which is the program I managed. It was founded in 2005 with the intention of connecting, connecting veterans to outdoor natural resource programs as a means of ecotherapy or transition. So we were able to build a program with the Department of Veterans Affairs on the idea of ecotherapy. But we also know that it's a good job generator. It's a good opportunity for me to earn a living wage for me and my family in parts of the state that don't necessarily have the Boeings, the Amazons, and the Microsofts. And so we see a lot of value of that in the Department of Veterans Affairs. There's stuff that's behind it as well. So in 2006, there was a study done of those who were serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what we found was there was a high proportion not numbers-wise, but a high percentage of proportion of those that are serving in the military are actually coming from rural communities. That means we have a lot of folks who are potentially going to return those to rural communities across the state and across the country, and we don't necessarily have the same types of initiatives or the same type of job opportunities in those rural communities. The federal VA is seeing this as well, with a lot of the folks that don't necessarily make it to the federal VA hospital or through their services are returning to rural communities, but we don't have the same type of opportunities. Do we all agree with that one? Amen. Okay. In Washington State, we have 110,806 rural veterans in the state. So that is about one-sixth of our total veterans population are actually living in the rural counties around the state. I don't know what that means as far as the total population for the state, but I know that our state is primarily I-5 corridor, you know, folks living around the rest of the state. So if we can say one-sixth of our total veterans population is actually living in rural counties, that's east side and west side, that's a pretty big portion of our veterans population. Now, if that's combined with the study done in 2006, that means we look like the rest of the country. We have a lot of veterans that are returning to rural parts of the state, and our initiatives with Amazon, Microsoft, and Boeing may not be making it to them. So we sh there is a valuable opportunity there. Okay? Now, if we go ahead and take this number, which is given to us by the Washington State Department of Ag, and that almost half of Washington farms are over 60, and less than 5% are younger than 35, that means that our farmers, our principal operators, folks that run operations around the state, are getting ready to retire. So we have a large portion that are getting ready to retire. And what they see, what a lot of farmers are seeing in Washington State, and this is around the country, they don't necessarily have family members and other people who are ready to step up and take over these farms. 
So we have a large portion of veterans that are moving to rural communities, and we have a large portion of principal operators or farm owners that might be retiring without somebody to build or for succession or to bring them come in. Does that make sense? Okay. Agriculture in Washington is a large employer with 160,000 workers annually and contributes 13 percent of the state's economy. Do you guys know what the number one producer of raspberries in the country is? Nobody. What county? Yeah. What? Which county? It's probably right here. Yeah, well, no, it's actually it's Whatcom County. Oh, Whatcom County. Whatcom County. Number one producer of raspberries in the country. So actually, well, oh, yeah. Number one export for Washington State is actually dryland wheat. Yeah, hops. Yeah, followed by apples. Hops. We have one of the, what do we say, we're number two in the nation for wine grapes. Bill? Number one producer. Producer. Of herbs. Herbs. And medicinal herbs for Neutralite. Really? Charlotte Lake, Washington. So agriculture is a big thing in Washington State. One of the things that's really unique about us, too, is we offer different types of ag, all the way from aquaculture, fishing, shellfish, to upland farming with uh, what we have here in Yakker and Wenatchee with orchards and stuff like that. So we have a great opportunity for different places to connect veterans, and agriculture is a viable part of our state's economy. Um, agriculture is also expanding. Just like everything else, technology has made its way into agriculture. And one of the unique crosswalks that currently exist in agriculture is these guys right here. Drones are used, used in large dry land wheat farm operations as well as large forestry operations on the west side. And we have a force of folks who are getting out of the military with drone experience. There's an opportunity there to maybe make more connections between what we learn in the military and what transitions as jobs to what the actual need is in the agricultural industry. Now, drones is a great, they're a great place to say that, but there's other places. Ag has large machinery, Ag has other opportunities, logistic needs, and so we have a workforce pop potential. Okay. So that was intended to lay the groundwork, and we'll give you, so, part of the groundwork. If we think about agriculture and connecting veterans to agriculture, if I'm a service provider and your guys' types of positions, there's a three pillar piece to agriculture. The first pillar would definitely be training and support. How do I become a farmer? How do I become an orchardist? How do I become a viticulturist and grow grapes and make wine? The edu educational piece. The second piece of that is going to be land. Where do I actually do this and how do I actually make this happen? Where are the supports and the partners that are in the local communities that can help me do that? And then the third piece is definitely going to be financing. How do I finance this and how do I get the funding to help me do that? That was kind of what our intention today was. So I'll hand it over to Vicki now. Okay. And thank you very much. is a homegrown right here out of Washington State. So much homegrown is right out of Spokane, Washington. And really our goal was to transition, connect, and cultivate our veteran community. And this all, the genesis of all of this, was from um, a film that I happened to be invited to watch, a documentary called ba uh, Ground Operations Battlefields to Farmfields. And it was about, we're going on about four years ago now that I actually saw this at the community college in Spokane. And uh, this film um, depicts our newest generation of vets as they're coming back and not all of them transitioning well or not necessarily knowing what they want to do when they do come back. And how they moved into agricultural fields and um, employment and it's been this very natural transition for them and very successful transition for them. And so for me, working in the conservation world in, in agriculture for the last, at that point it had been about 23 years, um, I thought this is interesting because I've worked for the Spokane Conservation District 23 years, worked in agriculture, and I've never heard of this yet. At the same time, Washington State being one of our largest agricultural states in the United States, I thought this is really interesting. I want to know more about this. So I started doing a little bit of research because this film is so captivating. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, please do. Um, it's available. You can get online and order it. You can order it from me. I have multiple copies of it. But it really tells a, a great story about American agriculture and about our veterans. And for me, those are my two favorite groups of people. I myself am not a veteran. I come from a huge military family, though. I have 11 family members actively serving in the military, of whom my son is one, uh, current active military. And uh, at this time, he, did, he was in a second deployment. He's uh, served in a third deployment since then. So this was very moving for me, very personal to me. And I wanted to find a way 
to get involved. And so after I watched this film, I started looking around. I thought, certainly there's got to be something going on in Washington State, or particularly Eastern Washington, that I could get involved with and, and, and maybe help with. And I, I looked and I looked and I looked, and I really wasn't coming up with any answers, nothing. And, and I kind of tried to drop it for a while, because I have a full-time job as the director of the Spokane Conservation District. But there was this nudging that I just kept getting, and, and so I call this, this was my call to action, because I ended up calling um, the gentleman that's the, uh, the executive director of the Farmer Veteran Coalition down in Davis, California, who this film is actually based off his work. And I had a great conversation with him, and it was interesting that he even took my call, but he did, and we had this great conversation. In the end, I said, well, when are you going to be doing something um, uh, in Washington State. And by the way, there is a, there was a, at the time there was already a small group up in Linden, Washington called Growing Veterans. They're what we consider one of our other partners. They're a fantastic group up there. But nothing outside of that very small area was happening. And uh, and he had told me about Growing Veterans. I said that's great, but who's going to do something in Eastern Washington? And his last words to me were, "Why not you?" <laughs> <laughs> and so that's uh, that was about March of uh, just a couple years ago and then just by chance Wendy Knopf and I happened to be at a food policy committee meeting uh, together and we started talking a little bit about what she does and what I do and um, she's got a program that would help young veterans as far as the financing and so we put our heads together and we started putting some pieces of a puzzle together we came up with vets on the farm and one of the things that we looked at were the transferable skills, and, and Jason's mentioned that, I've heard it in a couple other presentations today. It's such a natural fit, and if we look at our traditional farming practices, and we look at what our military veterans are, what our veterans are coming out of as they transition, there really is no better person to fill this gap that we've got in our, our agriculture today. It went up with our aging uh, farmer being 60 plus years old. There's not enough new coming in to, to make that backfill actually happen. So um, if we look at these skills that um, our veterans are coming out with, um, it's, it really is a, a perfect transition. There's a, a quote out there that says, America needs a million new farmers in the next 10 years. This is actually a little old now, so it's, I mean, we're moving up on that, and veterans want the job. And I'll add, veterans are very capable of the job. Uh, this is, okay, we just talked about that. A million new farmers in the next 10 years, and we believe that our U.S. veterans can fill that need. So that was really the impetus of forming Vets on the Farm, was to provide um, a tool and a pathway for them to, um, to look at agriculture and possibly other natural resource careers that would um, help them transition out of their military career and into their civilian life. Um, so again, that's on the farm. We designed it as a model. Uh, Wendy and I did a lot of work on this together. We really wanted a transferable model. We wanted something that would not just be for Spokane, that would be something that could be taken perhaps across the United States because we looked at other models and they were great, but they're all very localized. Um, one of the beautiful parts about being involved in a conservation district is that there is at least one in every county. So there's 3,000 of them across the United States. So they're a the perfect vehicle to be able to do something like this. Um, and again, will they all look different? Yes, because our resources are all different and our needs are all different within each county or within each you know, part of the country. But it's a great place to start. So we are having some, I will say, movement across, you know, more national movement. Wendy and I have been invited down to Oregon. They're looking at Vets on the Farm as a model down there. And I've actually presented a couple times now on some national, um, some national committees um, that are for conservation districts that are interested in maybe taking it out to a couple of their other states. So um, we based it off, so the model is based off our four principles. Um, Jason hit on that education, experience through internships and mentorships, acquisition, impl implementation, and employment, and then uh, one that we feel is very important is outreach. Overcoming, oh, that kind of turned out weird. Don't know what happened there. Um, but some of the barriers to entry that we are, are trying to break down for our vets is actually giving them the right education and experience in order to get them to that place of acquisition. So again, we talk about this being a roadmap or a pathway for them. We are a program that is designed to give them the resources that they need. We start with education, and we have worked with WSU um, Extension Office. This was a this is a uh, curriculum that was developed by WSU and, and University of Idaho called Cultivating Success. It's what we consider our corner piece of education. We start here, and then we hopefully can help move some of our veterans a little further along 
using perhaps their GI Bill, which was a great, I, I attended that session today, that was a really informative session. Um, but the, this is a 12 week course that we put them through and I like to call it uh, the sifter box because our vets get to come in with their idea of what they think they might want to do, throw it in this big hopper. Through the 12 weeks we bring in experts, everything from accounting and bookkeeping and insurances and, and finances like Wendy to um, actual farm operators. We take them out on farm walks. We try to give them all the nuts and bolts of what they're going to need to look at if they're looking at going into some form of agriculture. And through that 12 weeks, they get to shake this out and refine it. And at the end, they come out with something close to a business model, perhaps a business plan, or they can go on to a next step of developing a business plan, which gives them um, some real numbers, some real data to be able to move forward. No, it's not just an idea anymore. They're actually gonna, they're gonna have some numbers that they can put to this and, and the viability of that. So um, this helps them identify and focus on a plan. And I love to tell this story because we have a vet that's here locally, he's just um, up in the Mansfield area, um, Owen Lowerman, maybe you guys have heard of him. Um, he started calling us about the time we were really getting started and, and we just helped encourage him because he's so capable of doing so much on his own. But he had all these great ideas. He had land, he was gonna run cattle, he was gonna have some pigs, he was gonna have chickens, he was gonna have an orchard, he was gonna do small crop vegetables, he was gonna do it all. And then he decided he needed to get maybe a little bit more focused. So he uh, went through another program that helped him really, really identify what it was that he could do and what he wanted to do, and he put the numbers to it. And he called me one day and he goes, I figured it out, I'm a chicken farmer, I'm a chicken farmer. Well, that guy is not just a chicken farmer. He started out with 100 uh, layers and 100 quail. He's now up to 3,000 birds, and we're only talking about in the last two years. He's running a phenomenal business. And uh, he's, made, he's in the paper around here in this area all the time because he sends me the articles, but he's just doing it and it's so awesome to see. So this really helps our veterans identify and focus in on something. I have another uh, vet that I've worked with that um, wanted to run cattle and he needed a mentor. So he didn't necessarily, he knew a lot about it already and he didn't necessarily need, well he did need some financing, but um, he just needed someone to kind of show him the ropes and so we hooked him up with a, a local uh, cattle rancher who by the way ended up taking him and his wife and kids into their home while they built their home and, and now he's ranching and he's got his own herd and he's, he's doing it. It's just so rewarding and so exciting because these guys are now living their dream. I mean they've already given, they've already served and now they get to come back and do something that they're really passionate about and I like to kind of think of it as bringing them, you know, from, from serving us and providing us with our national security to now serving and providing us with our food security. And if you don't think those two are related, folks, I got another story for yeah. you. They're very related. Our food system is vitally important to our nation's security. Uh, so experience is, again, through this internship and mentorship program. Um, we, um, once we, we get them through cultivating success and we really feel like they've, they've got a clear idea of what we what they want to do, we try to hook them up with somebody that's doing it. Hopefully, that goal is to give them, um, to, to be able to provide somebody that's going to give them some, a little bit of help, a little bit of advice, and maybe they'll avoid some of the pitfalls, right? Uh, maybe there's a few places that they can, they can maybe avoid um, spending too much money, or there's too much time doing something, or just provide them with some information that's going to make them a little bit, make them successful a little bit faster. So those internships and mentorships are a piece that we find very, very valuable. And it's also uh, really rewarding for both the mentor because they get to pass on this generational knowledge. And again, if we go back to the fact that our average age farmer is 60 years old, a lot of them, their children didn't come back to the farm or they, you know, they maybe uh, decided that they wanted to go do something else. So they don't have anybody to pass that information along to. And again, I'll go back to our food security vitally important that we're keeping that information and keeping that generational knowledge going. Um, so in Spokane, we have been, and I'm gonna just flat out say it, we have been blessed with the fact that we had a, a farm family uh, really step up to the plate for us and they donated us three acres of land and uh, with a house, with a farmhouse, and that is ours now that we've turned into a learning farm and it's located up on the old Palouse Highway. And we use that as a place that our vets can come up and learn small crop vegetable farming, intense vegetable farming. And there's money to be made there. So we use a model um, where we actually have two speakers coming in November, Curtis Stone and Jean Martin Fortier, 
Both of them farm under an acre and are bringing in grossing over $100,000 a year. So that is our model that we're using and we're teaching that to our vets. So we right now have, um, we have between six and eight vets up there at a time. We have consultants that we use that come up every six weeks and uh, teach another class and then they run the farm. So we've, we're growing under contract. We've contracted with a local salsa company called Mama Torres Salsa. If you're from Spokane, you know who they were, but they're a phenomenal fresh salsa company. So we grow their tomatoes, tomatillos, onions, peppers, cilantro, cabbage, and lettuce. And um, so we're under contract, and so that's what our vets are growing. Our goal, we, we go, and by the way, we've only used uh, not even a full acre of our ground. So our goal this fall is to finish our infrastructure up there, and we're going to provide about, we think we're going to be about 75 by 75 foot plots, and we'll be able to lease those out a very nominal amount to our vets that are interested in now growing something for themselves. And the beauty of this is that they get to, they get to experience this on a scale that they can handle. They share um, our equipment, all of our capital stuff, our equipment, our infrastructure. They don't have to have this huge capital investment. And then when they're ready, they can scale that up. And, and in the meantime, hopefully we're able to help them find that land, that acquisition piece. Um, uh, let me go back to this one really quick. So that's not our hoop house, but we have a beautiful hoop house up there. And I just want to tell you how generous the community is, because once you start talking and telling your story, people just stand up and help out. And last year, um, we we have, um, if, are you guys familiar with KHQ at Channel 6 News in Wenatchee? Okay, Dan Kleckner, he holds an annual golf tournament, yeah, for veterans every year. It's a fantastic program. And all of the proceeds that come into that get turned back out to veteran organizations. And last year, Vets on the Farm was the recipient of $10,000, and we were able to buy a beautiful, beautiful greenhouse. And that's what we actually grew in early this spring. And then um, a Vista Corporation, they bought land that had some very old hoop houses and greenhouses on, and they were just going to tear them down. And so we got a hold of them and said, if we, if we send our vets out there and take that down, can we have it? And absolutely. So we got this hoop house that we've also put up. So then we transfer our tomatoes into our hoop house. So we've got this really beautiful little system going, but it's really about the community stepping up to it and helping us out, providing us with that. And then a little side note on this, um, I just have to say, it's on the, on the um, uh, our greenhouse. So our greenhouse came in in September. It all came in big pallets. It's a big greenhouse. So big pallets of stuff are sitting up at the farm. And winter's or uh, fall's starting to come on. And the weather's starting to change. And my farm manager got called back to active duty. And when that happened, I knew our greenhouse wasn't going to go up. And I was just sick to my stomach. Um, because without that, we weren't going to be in production this spring. Well, at the same time, my son had just got back from his third deployment. And he was over in Iraq. And He's with the 219th Red Horse, and so they built, they're, they're builders, and he had built big, huge case span buildings. And he had about three weeks be, between when he uh, needed to get to his winter job, which was out of Fairchild Air Force Base. And he said, Mom, do you just want me to build your greenhouse? I was like, yeah, I do. And so my son, with three of our vets, put together our greenhouse over the, the fall, which was what got us into production this spring. So it, it is absolutely gorgeous. If you're in Spokane, Washington, I want you to make sure you call me. I'm going to give you a tour because you got to come and see it. It's really spectacular. Um, so, and then we moved on. Um, we move on. This is the, the third piece of our of our um, model is the employment and acquisition. So, our goal is to either get them to where they're acquiring land and able to be farming or ranching, or uh, you know some other employment, with, whether that be in conservation or some other ag-related employment. And I'll, I'll give you another story. So we had two vets working for us up at the farm the last two seasons. They were doing you know, great stuff. But it really turned out that maybe they weren't farmers, but they liked agriculture. So this year, we had an opportunity to work with um, a big warehouse in Ritzville. It's called the Ritzville Warehouse. It's grain elevators. And these two guys went down there. I just stopped to see them yesterday, and they just love it. They each are in charge of their own grain elevator. They just absolutely love that hot, dirty work. <laughs> they're both Marines, and they both camp out all summer long in the park, but they are happy. I, I wrote to somebody said, they are happy as clams after. They love it. And so um, while it may not be directly farming or ranching, there are so many related careers and employment opportunities in agriculture, especially in Washington State, as Jason alluded to. So our goal is really to help them find that, whatever that might be. And it may be the 
that these two guys one day, for what they learned, because they helped build those greenhouses, and they put in that infrastructure, and they laid irrigation line, and they planted 4,500 plants, it may be that they, at some point, decide to come back to that. So, um, And again, we also really encourage um, our vets, as they come through, to use that GI Bill. If they've got a benefit that they haven't used yet, and, and we get them moving through this, we hope to be able to help them with that. So, um, And then we are... Um, Part of that's on the farm was to host a database for employment opportunities. And as we're going to talk a little bit more together about the Washington State chapter of the Farmer Veteran Coalition, but we're getting, all three of us are really getting emails on a frequent basis about, hey, I need, um, I need a mechanic in the Davenport Sea. You know, and so we've got all these job opportunities coming into us now, and we um, are uh, hosting a database for that. So then the last piece was called, uh, as I said, was outreach. And again, that same family that donated that three acres of land, they also donated a tractor to us. It's a 1954 Farmall 300. It did not look like that when they donated it to me, I will say that. Um, in fact, it looked a lot different. Um, but we use this as what we call our spokesperson because we go out throughout Eastern Washington to all the community parades and, and different events. And we take our tractor and we have an entourage of veterans and their families, and we, we uh, talk about um, our program, we talk about um, our communities, we talk about our veterans and our outreach, and it really is this, um, somebody in one of the other workshops talked about how veterans need that community, it, that it brings it all back around for them. Yeah. You're invited to the Trout Lake Fair next year. Okay, we'll be there. We've got a huge, our whole valley is ag, dairy, organic dairies, uh, Trail Lake Farms is the Neutralite company, all natural herbs Send and stuff. me an email. I'll and, get it on my and, Yeah, schedule. we need, this is huge. This yeah. is amazing. Well, this is a lot of fun for us, too, and it's really what has uh, strengthened and brought us together as a group. We are now in eight counties. So we started, Wendy, we're just two, two and a half years old now. We're in eight counties in eastern Washington, and we're being asked to come out across the state uh, to, and, and uh, across state boundaries over to Oregon now, too. So. We are really excited about Vets on the Farm. Um, you know, I always say that you know you're on the right path when the door is just open for you. And again, um, when this all began, um, I knew this was much bigger than me, way bigger than me. And I, you know, I'm a very faithful person. I said, if this is your will, I'll be the boots on the ground, but you gotta open the doors. And, and without a doubt, every door has been open. So there's one of our parades right there. That's what we look like coming down the street. Those are all vets carrying flags and and uh, and the banner and, and Randy Edmonds driving and this one, the Edmond Brothers Farms is the one that donated the land and the tractor to us. And then in the background are all of us, the family and support system for all of our vets. So can I answer any questions for you before I turn it over? Yeah, go is, ahead. Is your program uh, certified for book rehab? Certified. Or eligible. Rehab? I have had two vets come in through Voc Rehab. So that answers. So okay. So yes, I guess so. Yes, I will say the other uh, um, interesting um, development we had this last year is um, Union Gospel Mission out of Spokane, Washington. They have a rehab program there as well, and um, we received one of our veteran um, interns through them, and that turned out to be a very successful thing as well. So, mm -hmm. so, so if you partner with that provide similar services. The one I was familiar with is um, actually that I'm familiar with is Growing Veterans. Is yeah. that similar? Yes. Yeah. So Growing Veterans. What you all? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So they're the ones that I referred to that are were over in Linden, Washington. They're now down in the Seattle area. Um, yes. So we consider them to be our partner. In fact, early on we went over and met with them and talked about their program. And there is a little bit of a difference that I'll explain. But um, so. Growing veterans, and Jason, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but their true emphasis is is addressing PTSD through agriculture and finding that healing space. Right. Well, I'm a conservation district, and I so and I'm not a, and I, I cannot claim to be a social service agency. So I have this very fine line that I have to walk. So I am agriculture using veterans, and in that process, we call it farm therapy with an F. It's our pharmaceutical, but we spell it with an F. <laughs> So just a little bit, is that, does yeah. that make sense? Is that no, okay? that's exactly what okay. no. And what? In the end, 
we all get the same thing. We get food and we get healing and we have our, our vets doing something that they're passionate about. And then the 12 week course, is that free or is it, or do they have to use their GI Bill? They do not have to use their GI Bill because it's not credited. Um, and for us, it's not free, but we have a partner who I've yet to introduce, Northwest Farm Credit Services, who has generously supported scholarships for our vets every year. So, yeah. And that's a big part of this, and that's who I'd like to introduce next is Wendy Knott. She is with Ag Vision of Northwest Farm Credit Services. Um, she is my co-founder for Vets on the Farm. She's also now serving on my board of directors because I just like her so much. I was like, you need to be on my board. And, um, but uh, Northwest Farm Credit Services has been a major, major player for us in Vets on the Farm as far as, um, are you going to talk about 100% committed or do you want me to do I wasn't going to, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, so one of the things that they get to do as an organization is um, their CEO has allowed each employee $300 a year and how many hours of community service? Three days. Three days of community service to an organization of their choice. Well, 40 of their employees chose Vets on the Farm because of Wendy. And just a couple of weeks ago, they, um, they came out to our farm on June 16th and spent the entire day helping us with all of our work that we had to do, and they presented us with $12,000 from their employees, which was amazing. Which we have used to buy some additional pieces of equipment that we needed to be able to go forward with this incubator concept that we'll be doing this next year. So, Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Wendy Knott. Thank you. Every time Wendy and I get together, it's like we tear up. I don't know why we tear up, but we do. But I guess it's maybe our passion yeah. for what I don't know how I don't know how we've been able to accomplish what we've accomplished. <laughs> it, and, and I will say this: if you find, and this is whatever you guys do, right? If you find the right passionate people, you get things done. You know, I don't know how it happens. I mean, you've all been on committees that you just come out of and you go, oh "My gosh, that was a waste of an hour," you know, or whatever. But if you find the right people, there might not even be very many people, but you just figure out a way to get it done, and then more passionate people join you, and just more and more things are able to get done. And I think, and obviously, we were blessed, and yeah, we are where we are. Yeah. I I just want to say, in the two days that I've been here now, uh, there's only been one other presentation in my opinion, that was as good as this one. And I know you're not done yet. But, <laughs> no, no, no. but the, thing that I, the thing that is really obvious is that this is real. It's filled with passion. It's filled with inspiration. It's exciting. I, I, our conferences from now on need to be based off the example of this presentation and what's happening. This needs to be the thing. This needs to be the thing that energizes us. When we open our conferences in the future, we need to open it with something as inspirational and as exciting and as life-changing as this presentation. We need to start this way, right here. Now it might not be just vets on the farm, whatever the subject matter is, it needs to be the thing that leads the charge. This is, you know, and I know people get excited about a tech job.